She is the epitome of the fan factor. Youngest artist in history to ever win a Grammy. Youngest artist in history and only one of six women to be named Country Music's Entertainer of the Year. I'm not a huge country music fan, so I had never really paid a lot of attention to her. Until this fall, I saw her on The Voice as a celebrity coach. Those of you that are sales managers, if you do coaching, you need to watch this YouTube video of this 22-year-old coach, the contestants on The Voice. She was creative, she was inspirational, and she was smart. And that's when I knew she's the fan factor. So then I wondered, how much is she worth? Because I don't make dinner, I make money. Right? Right, operations? So I Googled it. This 22-year-old is worth $200 million in the most competitive, cutthroat, thankless industry in the world, show business. She's a brand. She's a business. She's just not another celebrity with a selfie of her butt. She is who? She is Taylor Swift. Can you imagine the epitome of the fan factor? When I originally wrote the book, The Fan Factor, my thought was, we're going to talk about how to be more authentic, how to be more relatable on social media. And those of you that have read it know that that's really what it's about. And then I began on this journey about a year ago to figure out how to take those same things of being relatable, of being more authentic, and present as an individual. And I thought, let's apply that to in-person communications. So this year, we're going to take the fan factor and we're gonna apply it to what happens every single day in your model home. And when I really knew I had my intro was when she did this for Christmas. How many of you saw the Taylor Swift video, her gift giving campaign? Yeah, last count on YouTube, it's at 17 million views. What I want to know are who are the 3,000 idiots that gave it the thumbs down on YouTube? What's wrong with them? In case you're not familiar, what she did was she watched several of her fans online on social media channels. She watched as they mentioned things they needed or wanted. She personally shopped, wrapped, packed, wrote a handwritten note, and in one family's case, personally delivered Christmas to them. Get your hankies out if you watch this video because it's fantastic. So I wanna talk today about that fan factor and how we become more relatable. Because here's the thing, you know, the digital diva is gonna talk about technology, right? Because of technology, because of Facebook, because there is an army of amateur photojournalists now capturing every single moment of every single day. That's all you people. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're out there capturing every single moment and you're reporting on it. So when a certain congressman from New York takes pictures and oopsie doesn't direct message them through Twitter, he tweets out his, well, you know, his name is Wiener. The whole world knows it, baby. <laughs> and suddenly, we have an insight into not so authentic, not so congruent, right? The other problem we have is, of course, with social media, some of you overshare, hello, hello. And those of you that follow me, I am so sorry about this week. I know it's been a lot. It's going to stop, I promise you. I just need to get through this week. It's been a lot of posts. Some of you are oversharing, and the problem is that you profess your love on your anniversary on Facebook. My wife, the greatest one that's ever lived, and the whole neighborhood knows you're with the babysitter. Uh-huh. It's not real. 
I think Abraham Lincoln said it best when he said the problem with quotes on the internet is you can't verify their authenticity. Right? Yep. Fake. Fake, 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 fake. So, transparency. Hmm. We've become to come in this world where transparency is more important than ever. Our religious leaders that we trusted with our children betrayed us. Airbags and seatbelts that were known to not work got put in cars anyway. Banks that were too big to fail, failed. And don't get me started on politics. So here we are in the era of distrust. But you know what you have? You have you that you bring to the table. And I'm here to tell you, authenticity sells. I don't care if you love this guy or you hate this guy. He has the longest running news cable show on the news. Number one rated in his time slot, how many New York Times bestsellers? Because his Catholic working school back, working class background, because he's looking out for who? Who's he looking out for? What's the word? He's looking out for you. And every time he cuts somebody off and doesn't let them talk, why does he do it? Because he's looking out for who? Who? He's looking out for you. And I'll tell you, he came to Raleigh, and again, not an endorsement or, or a commentary, just when a great celebrity speaker comes, I go. I went to see Tony Robbins, I walked on the hot coals. I, if they come to my town, I go. I went to see Bill O'Reilly, and what did I see? The same exact guy that's on the TV, I saw him on the stage. Authenticity sells. We're going to do a quick poll kind of like American Idol or The Voice, right? Because I am the digital diva, right? Get out your cell phones. Yes, get them out. Get out your cell phones. If you do not know how to text, ask the person next to you. Okay, here's how it works. In order to participate, you will need to text NAHB1. That's where you are. I know you've been out all night long, but you're at the National Home Builders Association show. You need to text NAHB1 to 22333. That's how you enter the poll. No, I'm not working the poll. We are taking a poll. All right, now I want you to vote on who do you think the most trusted, authentic brand in America is? Do you think it's Amazon? Do you think it's Starbucks? And what you do is you text in the letter of your choice. Disney is in the lead. Okay, we got a little Johnson & Johnson action. Little Amazon, 27. Ooh, Starbucks, what the? You guys are paying $6 for coffee and you don't trust them? It's pretty good. All right, let's see who's winning. 33%, 33, 35. Amazon's in the lead at 35. We got a little Disney in the lead at 33. And we got a little Johnson Johnson at 24. Okay, Amazon and Disney. And I'm going to cut the poll. Thank you. All right, so we got Disney at 36%. You know why? And you know why you pay double for it? Because when you take your kid to Disney World, after you've bought a $10 hot dog, and a $5 Diet Coke. And that little girl sees that princess for the first time. And she gets her picture. And she comes running back over to you and tugs on your leg and says, Mommy, best day ever. And you go, you know what, baby? It is. Because they make dreams come true there, right? My personal favorite is Southwest Airlines. I fly a lot. Surprise, right? I love Southwest Airlines because what they tell me, they do. They don't charge me extra fees like, you know, Spirit Airlines or to pay to go to the bathroom. That's really a problem because I have to go a lot. You know, I don't have that much money. But Southwest Airlines, it's two bags free, nothing extra. It's awesome. To me, that's authenticity. Oh. Who is this guy? Who is he? He is Simon Cowell. All right, here's the problem, a little problem I ran into. 
<laughs> I'm writing this talk, I'm all into it, I'm all excited. And about a month ago, I open up Facebook and there's a headline, Authenticity is overrated. Guardian newspaper, it's a British newspaper. I'm like, rot row, because I can't change this speech. <laughs> so I think, I'm going to give this a read. So I start reading the article, and what I actually find out, the author had an interesting point. He said, you know, when I hear authenticity, I feel like somebody's about to sell me something. It's a marketing term. It's not real. And then I thought of this guy. Simon Cowell told it like it was and took a little known talent show and skyrocketed at that time to the number one reality television show on, on, right? Made them all billions of dollars. But you know what the issue was with his level of authenticity? It's not a win-win. Ask Jennifer Hudson. Was he right about Jennifer Hudson? No. He was right about a lot of them, don't get me wrong. And most of the time, I completely agreed with him, by the way. And I loved his candor. But you all know people who say things like this. Well, that's just me. That's just how I am. Right? And they use the, well, that's just how I am. I'm just being me as an excuse for their bad behavior. I believe in the professional world, authenticity is and must be a win-win. Yeah, I was recently reading, rereading Stacey London. She is the, one of the hosts on the show, What Not to Wear. I was recently reading her book, The Truth About Style. And she said, the truth about style is that you want to be 75% what you love, what you rock, what you feel good in, the type of things you like. And you want to be 25% of who and where you aspire to go and how you need to be perceived to get there. And I thought, interesting analogy, and wouldn't that be interesting for us in terms of our authenticity? A 75% of who we are present, but a little 25% of making sure it's a win-win. In this world of distrust, your competence is not enough. It's the baseline level. You've got to know the product, you've got to know the pricing and the floor plans, you have to know your stuff, but they are going to assume that you do. I thought David put it very eloquently when he talked about that. Everybody's good. That's exactly the point here. In fact, what they're really looking for, equally important, is the credibility. It's why you're doing what you're doing. It's not enough that you build a good house. What they want to know is, did you pay all the workers a fair wage? And are they all legal? Did you maintain the environment and keep it the way you found it in the neighborhood? Or did you dump stuff out the back that you shouldn't have? Ask BP. Right? So it's not just what you did, but it's why you did it. And as a salesperson, it is why are you helping me? So we're going to do four trust breakers, four things that you're probably inadvertently doing. Because I think most of you are coming into this in a positive place. Most of you are wanting to help people, but there's these little things you're doing that you don't know that send up a red flag to somebody that think, makes someone think, this is not about me. They're not in it for the right reason. All right, let's do number one. Number one is my favorite, when you make it about you. When you make it about you, there's three ways in a conversation that you can make something about you. They come into the model home and you say, oh, it's so nice to meet you. Where are you from? And they go, we are from Orlando, Florida. And you go, oh my God, oh my God, I am from Orlando, Florida. I am from Orlando, Florida. I just moved to Raleigh, North Carolina four years ago, but I am from Orlando, Florida. Yes, I went to Killarney Elementary. I went to Robert E. Lee Junior High. I went to Winter Park High School. And do you know what? I gave birth to my baby, yes, in Winter Park at Winnie Palmer Hospital. And I don't know if you know, but Winnie Palmer Hospital was founded by Arnold Palmer. You know that really great golfer? Yep, I go to that golf tournament every year in Orlando. Yep, because I'm from Orlando. Oh, I just love Orlando so much. And you know, one of my favorite things to do is go to Epcot at Disney. Can I keep going? Do you know people like this? Say yes. You share one little fact about yourself and in a desire to relate to you. I think they're just wanting to relate to you. So we have rapport, sir, right? We're just going to have some rapport. But they talk about themselves. Stop it. 
Stop it. That is a red flag that you're not interested in me. Number two, when you want up, they come in, you see they're driving a nice car, you compliment the car. Oh, I see you, that's a Jeep. Oh yeah, that's a new Jeep. That's our brand new 2015 Jeep Cherokee. Isn't it gorgeous? And this person says, yep, love it. Our new Porsche Cayenne SUV, it rocks. Really? Really? That's the one upper. You know them. And the minute they start one upping you, you start thinking, are they really in this for me or who is this about them? Last one is the overcorrector. The overcorrector goes like this. You're standing in the kitchen of the model home. The wife looks at you or looks at the husband and says, oh my God, this granite. This granite is the most gorgeous granite I ever saw in my life. You know, everybody has granite. You know, granite is the hottest countertop ever. And you know, all our friends, they have like black granite and cherry cabinets. It's like the hottest thing. It's like what everybody has. And if we don't have it, I'm going to die. Folks, what's the hottest countertop today? Quartz. What color are the cabinets today? White. The overcorrector goes, well, ma'am, you know, if you really want to be in, then um, actually that's quartz. And really nobody does chair anymore. You got to go with the white cabinets. Wah, wah, wah. Right? You overcorrectors out there are breaking trust all over the place. Quit it. Number two, you don't explain the process. You ever sat down with your boss for a little one on one sales meeting? Everything's going fine. You're just chit chatting about who's on your prospect list, how many appointments you have for the week what your follow-up calls look like. And a few minutes in, they get out a notepad and start writing. How many of you have been to your attorney or your physician and you're just chatting away and everything's fine and then they go, huh? And they suddenly start writing. Some of y'all's parole officers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what happens? When you just start writing out of the blue and you don't tell somebody why, it gives you a little bit of a sick feeling. Where are you writing that down? What are you writing down there? What do you got there? What's that about? Marcy, what's that about? What are you writing down there? Right? It'll scare you to death. Don't do that. Before you start taking notes, before you take them on a tour, before you show them a plan, ask for permission. With your permission, I would like to. And then you tell them why. With your permission, I'm gonna take a few notes because I know you don't wanna waste your time here today. So I want to make sure I show you exactly what you need and we get mission accomplished. It's as simple as that. Next one, we're going to do a little poll here. Our second poll of the day, get your phones out. To participate, you need to text. If you've already done this once, you don't have to do it again. To participate in the poll, NAHB1 to 22333. The rest of you that have already done it once, you may now just vote. Which is the most important part of the sales process to explain? Why you're taking notes, why you are asking questions, why you are registering them, why you are touring, and mostly your boss will want to know, why on earth are you negotiating? All right, questioning. So with your permission, I'd like to ask you a few questions. With your permission, I'd like to ask you a few questions. All right. We'll give it a couple minutes. It looks like questioning is going to run uh, in the lead here. All right, we'll close the poll. It's pretty overwhelming. Thank you. Third trust breaker, when you fail to ask for feedback. I got to the checkout at Home Goods the other day. I was with my mom. We were shopping away, and we'd had a ball, and we were giggling. So I guess the guy thought, you know, we looked like we had a good time. So he asked me, did you ladies have fun shopping in our store today? We were like, yeah, we did. Look at this big cart full of stuff. I'm mostly giggling because she's paying for it all. <laughs> Love it when mama comes to town, right? How many times are you checking in during the sales meeting? You need to be checking in. How are we doing so far? That's an easy check-in. Now, the only way you can effectively check in is if you properly set the agenda at the beginning of the conversation. So what's on the agenda today? What's the mission? I once walked into White House Black Market <laughs> and I was approached by their sales manager, I didn't know it at the time, who took one look at me and she said, what's the mission today? And I said, well, I have a little something, something I gotta go speak at. It's a little bit important and I need to look really nice. 
$600 later. How nice do I look? <laughs> you better clap. <laughs> Every single other salesperson had asked me, what? What did they ask me? You tell me. How can I help you? How can I help you? How can I help you? You know what the answer is? You can't. If that's your opening line, you can't help me. <laughs> when your opening line is, what's the mission today? And then you tell me to take a seat in the dressing room while you go collect five different outfits from head to toe and you bring them to Her Highness? Oh, you can help me. Mm-hmm. And I'm about to help you make your commission. Mm-hmm. But the only way that she could then later check in with me, because she knew the mission, I told her exactly what I needed. And so later when we were trying it all on, she could say to me, how are we doing so far? Are we wow yet? And I was like, well, I think so. You tell me, right? It was a fantastic experience. If you fail to check in, then they think you don't care and you're not in it for the right reason. Last one, when you fail to follow through. This is pretty obvious. I know this is common sense. I don't think that it's your intention or desire to not follow through. I think most of you come to it from that. I just think you forget. You're kind of like me. You've got CRS disease. Can't remember stuff. I have two technology suggestions to help you solve this problem. Number one is an app called Remember the Milk. I love this app. It's my favorite list making app on my iPhone because I don't know if you're like me, but I write lists for the grocery store and then I get there and I don't have the list. Yes, I heard a yes. The list is where? It's at home. I get to the store to return a blouse. I go to that store to return the blouse and what do I do? I left the blouse at home, but I'm at the store. So I just buy me another blouse. <laughs> so here's what I do. Now what I do is I remember the milk. It's a free app. I make lists on it constantly because the one thing I always get to the store with is my wallet and my phone. <laughs> when Apple Pay, now your wallet and your phone are the same thing. It's even better, right? So I have a grocery list in Remember the Milk. I have an errands list. I have a target list. I have every possible list you can imagine, and it's fantastic. If you want to organize your team on reminders, and you have a team of people that need to all be able to see an in-the-cloud list, and you want to send alerts and reminders, I run Creating Wow's digital department off of this app called Smartsheet. Every Monday morning, my web designer knows he is going to get a phone call from me with his list off of his Smartsheet list, and it better all be checked off. <laughs> I can send him alerts and reminders. All the bloggers that work for us, they're all on Smartsheet. It is a fantastic team management tool. It's basically like a spreadsheet on steroids, but better than a spreadsheet because I can set up the alerts, reminders, and status, and I can attach documents. So it's super easy. I think I pay $14 a month for that thing, and it is worth every single penny. Highly recommend. Authenticity is a choice. Some of you are born more, let's say, wide open than others. Some of you live very wide open, and you have no problem being yourself all the time. Let's take that down to 75%. Okay. Others of you, and you might be surprised to know me, find that bringing yourself to the table is not always that easy. You want to be perfect, or you want to be perceived a certain way. But the choice really is more of a behavior than it is a personality trait. Brene Brown, everybody familiar? You know Brene Brown? Oprah made her famous. Where is Oprah? I need Oprah. Somebody, get, somebody call Oprah. I need, I need her to make me famous. Brene Brown has a killer TED Talk on authenticity. Google it. She's got books on it. It's fabulous stuff if you want to know more. But it's a choice you make. It's a choice you make not to correct someone when it really doesn't matter. The other day, I come home ranting and raving to Alan. Alan, you are not going to believe this. 
I have just heard another relatives of Einstein speak again. I had been at a seminar up at our clubhouse, marketing association seminar, and I thought the entire time I was sitting there, that I had been listening to the great, great grand niece of Einstein who'd invented the light bulb. Anybody see the problem with this? And I think I got Einstein in my head because just two months prior, I had really heard the great, great, another great, great, great grand niece of Einstein giving her keynote talk. And I came home so aggravated. I'm like, you know what? She wasn't really a very good speaker. But she's like the great, great, and now I've heard two Einstein people like, what is up with that? And the light bulb. Operations just smiles and says, a little befuddled looking, says, yeah, honey, that sounds really aggravating. A few days later, I come back and I go, Oh my God, it was Edison. I was aggravated during an entire speech because I didn't want to hear another relative of Einstein and it was Edison the whole time. He goes, yeah, I know, honey. He goes, Einstein didn't invent the light bulb. I go, why didn't you correct me? He was like, it didn't really matter. And you're really cute when you're that mad. That's why we've been married 16 years. Because we gave up correcting each other on stuff that doesn't matter a long time ago. When you follow through, when you don't make it about you, when you listen, that's the choice to be authentic. And while I may have opened with a celebrity who, you know, hey, still just a celebrity, I'm going to close with the real deal. I want you to meet Janet Backman. How many of you know Janet Backman from Facebook? I see two big fans in the back from Southern Homes of Florida. Her sales manager is here today. Janet Backman's the 2014 Salesperson of the Year for Southern Homes of Polk County. I've only met Janet twice in my entire life. Two classes she's attended of mine in Florida, but I know her because she has the fan factor. I know that she is a Patriots fan. I know that she has a little grandbaby that she loves better than anything in the entire world and that he lives in San Francisco. And I know that she brings her authentic self to her model home every single day. You want to know how I know that? Because when the announcement came on Facebook that she was the 2014 Southern Homes Salesperson of the Year, the announcement as of Monday had... 172 likes and 97 comments. And that's a non-paid, that's just an organic post. And as I read through the comments, that's when I messaged Jared and Janet and said, may I brag on you and make you the closing story? Because the comments were all from her customers. It wasn't 97 of her friends and family. It was her customers and her realtor partners that wrote things like, I'm not surprised. You're the best salesperson I've ever met. One wrote, I bought a home from you two years ago and we're still friends. One wrote, as a realtor partner, I value you and your work. You are amazing. And one wrote, because of you, We are living the American dream, and my baby has the best nursery, the most beautiful nursery in a brand new home, and we wouldn't have it without you. Wow. That's authenticity. So, as you think about your year moving forward, and you think about what you bring to the table that's unique or interesting or different, I would encourage you to ask yourself, if your sales manager were to name you the 2015 salesperson of the year and were to post it on Facebook, how many likes, how many comments, what would those comments be? What is your fan factor? Thank you. Yeah.